hello everybody. Uh, my name is Mike Richardson, and agility is my passion. And I'm here with Jerry Singleton, a former U.S. Navy fighter pilot, and we've just shot a webinar about the agile leadership of fighter pilots. And Jerry has shared some uh, inspirational principles with us uh, that you see uh, laid out on our final slide here, uh, which we'll recap in a moment. Uh, first of all, let me tell you a little bit about Jerry. He had 31 years as a uh, uh, naval aviator, uh, fighter pilot in the U.S. Navy. He saw combat operations in Vietnam, Grenada, and Lebanon, and he was commanding officer of Strike Fighter Squadron 131, an FAA-18 fighter squadron when it was awarded the Extasin Award for the finest FAA-18 squadron in the U.S. Navy. Um, after completing his, his Navy career, Jerry joined the School of Business Administration at the University of San Diego, and his academic interests focus on leadership development, creating high-performance teams, ethical decision-making, and organizational social responsibility. Oh, and by the way, amongst other things, Jerry is an oboist and a jazz musician. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, thanks so much for uh, being with us today. You've, you've shared some uh, fantastic stories and examples very broadly, very deeply uh, for about 75 minutes, and we'll just do a very quick recap here. We went through five aspects of agility that we need to change our relationship with, chaos, triage, insight, luck, and journey orientation. And you've shared with us five principles that uh, speak to each of those attributes of agility. Uh, first one is plan for chaos. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure, Mike. Uh, first of all, I like your agility. I like those categories, chaos, triage, insight, luck, and journey orientation. Um, it provided me a new way of, of looking at, at, at concepts that we use as, as follow pilot. In a chaos, the first thing plant with chaos is, as I mentioned in, in a longer presentation, imagine an aerial engagement of soccer at a supersonic airspeed. Uh, there is going to be chaos. There's always chaos. But the idea for planning for chaos is sort of a two-fold thing. One is we want to minimize how chaos negatively impacts us. And we want to maximize how chaos negatively impacts the enemy. And to do that, we construct a plan that's as simple as possible for us without mitigating our, our speed advantage, our dynamic advantage, or decision-making advantage. And in that plan for chaos, we discuss the OODA loop, which is the observe, plan, decide, and act. When you're in an aerial engagement, you, you have to see what the other airplane is doing compared to what you're doing. And you orient, you observe what that enemy is doing, you orient yourself to it, you decide to make a move, and you make that move, and, and then immediately go back into that decision cycle. So you want a short and dynamic and effective and efficient decision cycle as you can get. Well, maybe confusing the enemy so that, that that enemy's decision cycle gets bigger and bigger and what we say the size of Montana. Um, right. if, if you can get inside his decision cycle, you can better manage uh, the chaos. You, you, you can't really affect the chaos, but you can manage your reactions with, within that chaotic environment and be successful. And then in helping us understand how fighter pilots triage that chaos, you shared with us a concept called the beaker. The beaker, yeah, and I asked you if you ever had to go to chemistry, chemistry class there as a little breeze guy, and you said you did. A beaker, you know, it's a little glass beaker, you can put it on a bunch of bird. You guys would do it to make hot water so you can have your tea, you know, from your tea and cookies, I guess. Um, but imagine a beaker with three layers of fluids of different, different uh, specific gravity. The bottom layer is red, the middle layer is green, the top layer is blue. And those are the priorities, and the bottom layer, the most important, is survival. Well, I'm going to have this engagement or a series of engagements or 30 years' worth of engagement, and I have to survive. We as a flight, maybe four uh, aviators flying together. And then we have the second level, mission success. We will, there's a, a purpose for what we're doing, and we want to achieve our goals. And the third is sort of looking good and doing your mission 
uh, with elegance and aplomb, and uh, your fellow aviators are impressed with your skills. Okay. Um, if you mix those things up, uh, you can you can not achieve mission success, look like a fool, and potentially die. Right. And I mentioned I mentioned nose position on a on an aerial engagement. I'm I'm trying to get my nose on a maneuvering enemy fighter. He's diving to get more airspeed. My nose position is critical for my mission success in, in getting a missile on his tail. But if he goes below a certain altitude, I won't be able to recover. I'll hit the ground. So my nose position is important for mission success until at some point it becomes a survival thing where I have to get my nose off him and go to a different move. And if I confuse those, and there's lots of things that a, a, a fighter guy has to deal with and, and pay attention to, um, uh, if I fixate on one of those, uh, I can let uh, a survival uh, aspect, uh, I, I'll miss that, and I won't attend to that, and, and uh, it could cause me to, to die, uh, not achieve a mission success. Okay. So we've got to triage these different levels appropriately and not let them get all mixed up because then uh, we're not triaging very well. And then we've got, a, we've got a kiss at supersonic speeds. Tell us about that. Uh, Imagine flying a jet fighter. You, you've got to fly the airplane, uh, you know, stand altitude, uh, manage your airspeed, uh, know where you're going. You got to navigate, manage your navigation system, you manage your weapon system. And you've got to, you know, say, pay attention to it. You got two motors. You want those things to keep running. You got to look, make sure your hydraulics are working. Uh, you got to, oh, there's an electronic warning spike. You know, some radar is locked on me. So there's a lot of stuff you got to attend to. So when we plan and we execute, we, we kiss it, obviously, keep it simple, stupid, at supersonic speed. So we want to simplify, but simplify it the correct way. And the way to simplify the wrong way is to stop scanning everything and fixate on one thing, thing, thing one single aspect, like the enemy fighter. If right. that's all you concentrate on, you're simplifying in, in a way that, that you know, is not good and produce bad results. So you've got to try to keep it as simple as possible while while maintaining your, your effectiveness and efficiency and and your cognition, your thinking is, is not impaired. Not least of all so that luck is on our side and, and as you say here, we've got to plan for good luck, plan for opportunity. Yeah, I, I've flown with, with guys that uh, somehow seem to be mystic pilots. There's a big engagement zone, and we're going to go into that and try to shoot some enemy fighters down. And instead of going directly in there, he, this guy faded for about 45 seconds, and then he went in. And when we when he went in, all we saw were the bellies of the enemy airplanes, and we just like shot them down like they were little wounded pigeons. Uh, and and after the flight, I said, uh, J. Rock, you faded there. Why? What, what made you do that? He says, I don't know. Just seemed like I ought to wait a little bit. So that in execution, that single move provided us with a very lucky opportunity. But, but I've seen this guy do this consistently. So when he executes, he somehow absorbs where the enemy airplanes are in his mind, what they're doing, maybe they're turning. Uh, and based on that instinctual, habituated gut feel, he does something that makes us look like we were really lucky. But it's right. amazing he could do it consistently. So you can also plan for opportunity. You can execute for opportunity and plan for opportunity. You know, we'll, we'll usually fly four airplanes into a fight. Uh, and, of course, in training, all the, each pilot, there's one pilot in each airplane. We all want to shoot down all the other enemy airplanes. We want to get greedy when we say our fangs are coming out. But... <laughs> So, but if, if you say, okay, let's actually plan for success as maybe we would do in combat, you're flying in like this, but one element does a 360 degree turn and goes right down on the deck. So now that element's behind me, and all I'm doing is, is you know, being a, you know, a wounded, wounded uh, dove, trying to gather the enemy airplanes to train for move so that he, he and his wing can race up from the deck and, and shoot the enemy down and never fall. That's called the unseen bogey. If we can set up a plan that might provide us one engagement out of four in training, uh, to get two, two airplanes in as unseen bogeys, 
And we will plan for that. We'll say, if you get in there, shoot down at least two of the enemy aircraft, then we're going to disengage. So right. that's our specific mission goal. That's our plan. We might not get it today, but maybe we will. If we do, that's something we can put on our hip pocket and maybe pull out for another day. So we right. we, we think luck is, is, is can can maybe be looked at as, as creating an opportunity. Okay. And then when we get all this right, it all comes down to the bottom line of the journey and having the desired outcomes that we want and avoiding the undesired outcomes that we don't. And here you talk about anticipate, link, and act. Yeah. Uh, you have to anticipate. You've got to be thinking ahead of the airplane. A jet fighter, you know, they go, they go pretty, pretty fast through the air. And when you start flying, them, uh, the instructors tell you, think ahead of the airplane. Think not where you are, but where you're going. And in an engagement, that's what you have to think. When, when you're approaching the merge, and that's when you're going to get visual contact of enemy fighters, you need to be start thinking about how you're going to kill one of them, and then right immediately start thinking how you're going to disengage, knowing that, that your flight may maneuvering and, and things may, may strip the two, two sections into two into individual elements. So you need to be anticipating that. You need to link, as, as I discussed in the, in the longer presentation, there's different phases for an engagement. There's the long-range surveillance. There's the inside 20 miles, perhaps a long range shot. There's the visual engagement where there might be maneuvering. Uh, there's some type of uh, shooting or something going on. Uh, and then there's an egress where you, you have to leave the battle area safely so that you can go back and, and look like Sky King when you land. Um, so you, you need to be able to link those phases very elegantly. And if you've got three other people flying with you, at any one of those phases, they can take the lead. And that should be a very elegant, instantaneous process. And whoever has the best view, best situational awareness, if action is needed, they immediately take action. Everybody drives to, to support that, that decision and that person who's instantly had the lead. So if you plan for chaos, you have some kind of a matrix that allows you to survive and mission success and do so elegantly. Keep things simple in a very dynamic environment. Create lucky opportunities that you plan for. And anticipate, link, act, and understand what the big picture of what you're doing is, how it fits into what we call the commander's intent, CEO, CEO's intent. Um, this action will help us on that journey. That's sort of how Excellent. the pilot looks at it. Excellent. Well, uh, thanks so much, Jerry. You've given us a real gift today. That was just a short recap, everybody. And uh, if you want to know a lot more in a lot more detail, a lot more depth, and a lot more breadth, then uh, go check out the webinar that you can find at www.mydrivingseat.com. Click on the blog tab, and then click on the category Everyday Agile Leaders. Jerry, you've given us a huge gift. Thanks so much for sharing your experiences and your insights. We really appreciate you. And not, not least of all, thank you for your service. Well, you're welcome. I enjoyed our, uh, our time together today. I always have fun uh, talking with you. Great. Thank you, Jerry. Okay. Bye-bye.